I am one of the hosts, Shaina. I'm here with my co-host, Maya. And today we are talking about bisexuality. But uh, first, we would like to do a land acknowledgement. So I'll pass it over to Maya for that. Thank you, Shaina. So Oregon State University in Corvallis is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River of Ampanefu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. Indigenous people are valued, contributing members of the Oregon State community and represent multiple sovereign tribes among students, faculty, staff, and alumni. AYA accepts its responsibility for understanding the continuing impact of that history on these communities. We are committed in the spirit of self-reflection, learning, reconciliation, and partnership to ensure that Oregon State as an institution of higher learning will be of enduring benefit, not only to the state of Oregon, but also to the people on whose ancestral lands it is now located. So with that, um, with that in mind and heart, yeah, what did we want to talk about with bisexuality? I mean, I'm always ready to talk about bisexuality, but like, <laughs> what are we, what are we thinking? Okay, yeah, same, Maya. I'm like, it's, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. So um, it's, it's been on my mind because I was talking to one of my friends a few days ago, but then also in the Disney course I teach, we talked about Mulan yesterday. And um, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, I know where this is going. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, you know, some of my students brought up that Shang is, is a, a bi icon. Um, I, I personally don't, I'm not convinced from the movie that, from the animated movie, at least I haven't seen the live action one. Um, like, I'm not convinced that I see him as a bi character, but I know like he is, he is very important representation for a lot of people who do like Mulan. So I'm, you know, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be a bi icon. Like I'm always looking for people to be bi. So like, great. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I, I thought, you know, since both of us identify as bi, it, it, would, it would be fun to talk about it and all the good stuff and the bad stuff. And the bad stuff only comes from what other people say and do. There's nothing like inherently bad about being bi, I'll say. Um, but I, so now I'm not sure where to, where to start this conversation, but. Um, well, I was so going to say, I do remember when, um, Shang was like trending not I, don't, I shouldn't say trending but like it was on my feed more so at one point than it is now or before so what him as like our bi icon um and I was like okay okay um but I was also to say that I'm pretty sure he was not in the live action like I remember loosely watching it but also not wanting to watch it because it didn't hold the same it wasn't essentially like the live action remake of the animated movie, it had its own story and tone. And so that in itself was like, fine. Um, but it wasn't the movie like I was anticipating. Um, also because why wouldn't you have Shang and Mushu and Cricket? Anyways, but yeah, no, like the discussion of like, just like that looking for like bi representation, um, in like me in films media books like I read this book I think called Rain like the way you think of like royalty um and the main character by and it was a fantasy novel and it was great and there were so many of these elements and it felt like even if it was fantasy like it was nice to see like people of color portrayed um in, like fantasy novels um and in this like with like just high, high respect but also to have like a main female character like have this whole story that goes from like of like being bi and like having initially like a male identifying partner uh, I won't spoil the book because I think people should read it um but like and then um like with the ending of it being with a uh another main character who's female and I was like wow this is amazing I was like eating it up I can like read a book in a day like it's just so good but like yeah 
Yeah, it, it seems to me that young adult novels are like in general doing a better job of representation. Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm thinking of a few books that I've read in the last several years now. And it's it's easier, I think, to find a good by representation in young adult books, but uh, maybe not always people of color. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you found a book that like that, personally it like, was really meaningful for you um I, I don't I didn't have that growing up I don't know if, if you did yeah no I definitely I mean there's a lot of things <laughs> didn't have growing up <laughs> I was thinking about it though because like as far as like people of color we had some great or we still do but, like some black sitcoms like in the spirit of black history month like they went hard like no sitcom in my eye like there's lots of good sitcoms like with people of color like I love sitcoms that have people of color because I'm like just that shared experience like ethnic people and the things they do like even if it's not particularly like black um or that next like there's those little pieces you know that are like like shine through where it's like yes like I'm running on Asian time or I'm running on ethnic time and just seeing those things come through um but as far as like sexuality also like did not have a lot of that had my like gay awakenings like I went back and watched a couple of shows and I was like that makes sense that makes sense like texted my <laughs> uncle and I was like this makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah like um, especially during the pandemic um, I've been re-watching things that I watched as a kid and like so many times I realized oh yeah I had a major crush on that character and I didn't recognize it as a crush when I was a kid. Um, I think because like, okay, so um, not to like make all this about like terminology or whatever, but um, once I started realizing that I was bi in my early twenties, I was 22. Um, I, you know, like started reading about it online because that's where we go. Like <laughs> that's where we find information. Um, and I realized like, there's a distinction between like sexual attraction and romantic attraction, right? So like I'm I'm attracted to like, multiple genders, but um, like rom my romantic attractions tend to be more towards like people whose gender is similar to mine. So I think growing up, like the way I was feeling about my like friends who were girls or women was different from the way I felt about guys. So I, I didn't recognize that like, oh, this isn't like, I don't just want to be their friend, <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think that's one reason why like I, it took me a while to put together like, oh no, I am rom like romantically and like otherwise attracted to women um, in addition to men. And I think, you know, growing up, I, I didn't know a lot of people who identified as anything other than men or women, but um, I definitely do now. So, sorry, I've talked for a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you're oh, good. <laughs> no, I'm just listening to you identify like the three, the three like thoughts of like a bisexual. Do I want to be you? Do I want to be with you? Or do I want to be your friend? What does this yeah. mean? Because <laughs> I've definitely <laughs> been there. And I think for me, like I realized like the way like people would describe me and my family would describe me is that like growing up and still am, I'm just like a very like, lovey like happy kid always was like involved with everybody like giving hugs and like just being like affectionate and just like just loving people um which was like you know that's just like a happy kid and like also being raised catholic <laughs> in the religious trauma like I didn't know like know right away like I knew something was up but I also I also didn't have like the language because you know we don't talk especially like with like uh like young kids like it's not something we talk about um it's so like in middle school when I met my um one of my best friends who transferred in um she gave me that language and then I was like oh this makes so much more sense like you are speaking what I am feeling and like she identifies too um as bisexual and so I was like okay so this is this is a whole new world this is what we're but then still under that like it opened up also a new, uh, another door of feelings because with the preachings of um, the church and certain religions, um, it was hard. And um, I came out in high school and like, I was grateful to have um, like 
a more welcoming and accepting community in high school, as well as all the the cool hip technology um, of like Instagram and no, 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 TikTok wasn't a thing yet. Um, but like just being able to like find like random strangers who like could share and like talk about their experiences like so openly so that I could like learn and knew more and then like developing that to like um, like multiple genders and just like giving me a more thorough understanding of like my sexuality um, was really nice. But it definitely was, it was hard growing up Catholic in that respect. Um, and sometimes still is like, I still, maybe I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual and hold like love for some of the teachings or the stories, not so much some of the people, but have being so ingrained um, for years of being like Catholic. Um, there's still some little like tense points. Yeah, I, I know it's very easy to internalize one like that people shouldn't be queer at all that's you know that's still like a huge um part of american culture even even if like the mainstream is getting better you know like we still see a lot of bigotry about um you know like people being anything other than straight uh and then the other thing with like being bi is we hear so many things that are specifically like anti-bi that that's easy to internalize too. Uh, I I questioned for a long time like should I should I just like identify as lesbian because so many people like don't don't want you they want you to choose a side right like as if there are sides or if there are like only two sides even um, but it's it's actually like mostly been my friends who identify as gay or lesbian who will say things about like say negative things about bi people so I've I've told a couple of a few friends who are you know not bi they like identify as as either gay or lesbian and um they'll say like they'll say something like oh you'll you'll figure it out or you'll come around as if like I'm on my way to identifying as like a gay or little, like mile stop like you're at the gas station filling up for the rest yeah. of your trip yeah I I know I know it's not like unheard of for people to people who are gay or lesbian to first identify as bi because it feels safer in some ways. Like, you know, their families still have hope that they'll end up with somebody of the opposite gender, right? Um, but, and, and then eventually they feel more comfortable identifying in a way that is like actually right for them. Like, I know that happens, but that, that doesn't mean that there aren't another set of people who are actually bi like us, right? Um, so that I think is like an additional layer of challenges for bi people like within the queer community. No, yeah, I, I definitely agree because I know for many of people when I began like having the conversation of like fully coming out, like knowing um, like not just like in a I think I am, but I'm like, oh no, yeah, this is me. Like, I love like more than just like one gender like I'm not just into men like I've you know I've been in high school I've learned a lot um and there are just these women who are like wow um but yeah like a lot of questions I received were um like are you sure how do you know and I'm like I I know like the same way you like are like you're gonna wake up and like make yourself coffee in the morning like it's natural like it's just an instinct like it's an instinct oh I see what you're saying like yeah it's they're not about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there there definitely aren't people who recognize that like this is a real feeling for us like we're we're not just like messing around just to have fun for a few weeks or something right um yeah it's 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 still hard enough to identify as queer in any way like to be open about it that it's it's hard for me to imagine somebody like taking advantage of or um 
like just seeing it as something fun because there's there still are challenges to it like it's if you're if you're going to I don't know if you're going to like use it for you know to get attention from somebody or whatever then you're making it you're just making it harder for that person sorry I'm not being I'm not being very articulate about this because it just makes me so mad no you're you put it into words like very wonderfully because I was like I know like in other conversations how like what I brought up can be like misconstrued and like again, like, I don't want to invalidate, like, the experiences of someone who's, like, questioning or may not know, like, are still on that journey. Um, It's more so about the people who, like, know for themselves that they aren't on that journey and that that's not their thing, but it's, like, as a way of, you know, like, like you're saying, like, being, like, having fun or that this is, like, taking all the good pieces, um, all the things that you, that this, like, some other people might deem, like, desirable or, like, the good aspects without that recognition of, like, what that journey looked like for people and how even, like, in that moment, like, the, like, realization of, like, what the other, another person's actions or just, like, you know, how they played into, like, how they fit into that other person's um, experience can, like, be icky. It can be, like, a, oh, well, like, I I developed or the, these feelings or, like, I'm still in early in my journey and I thought this was something we were going through together, but now, like, to have to look back on some of that um, can be a challenge. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just hurtful not even like not even thinking about like on a systemic level just like between two individuals like one person just did something that was hurtful yeah and I think like for like my relationships um and I feel like for any relationship just like transparency like you know that question of like what are you looking for like I don't find any issue with it like if someone was like oh what do you want I'm like well I would like I want a relationship and that's not what they're looking for then we don't like waste each other's time and like you know maybe something changes like at first it was one thing and now it's another but like the like worst experiences I've had were like people like just in general relationships but like people who like so vehemently were like no this is my intention this is what I want only for them to make it very clear that all along like it never would have been like I wouldn't have been their choice or that there was someone else on the side too um, that they were like waiting for. Um, And so like that paired with some, like those feelings around like one's own sexuality, I feel like it just can like amplify that where it's like this or this in its own sucks. And so now there's all these additional layers of like, like that make it complicated. Yeah, this this question might be a bit of a a tangent, but um... You know, I thought about it from as, as you were talking. So, you know, like a lot of the stereotypes about bi people that are in American culture, I think are, I think are applied mostly to white bisexual women. So like as women of color, I think our experience is different. Um, so like for, for example, <laughs> um, I am South Asian, right? Like my family is is from Bangladesh. And there's there's also like a bit of a stereotype in American culture that South Asian women just aren't sexual at all. Like in I I don't know, I don't know what it is, but um like you know, asexuality is a thing. It's not, it's just not that like all people who look like me are asexual. Uh so like, you know, they're the the big stereotype about bi people is that we're promiscuous, right? But like people don't expect that of me because they think that I'm not sexual at all. It doesn't happen so much within like our generation, but like older people sometimes will just be shocked that I'm bisexual because they can't compute that like promiscuity with like my not being sexual. Right. So they like just won't believe that I'm I'm bi. Like if they if I say it, it's just like it completely goes out of their head. Like they're confused for a second and then they're like, no, that's that's not how it is. Um, so like, you know, it's that that's not like a major oppression in my life, but it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm wondering if you notice 
intersections of your experience as a woman of color and you know you have like like intersections within that um and like somebody who's by yeah no i was like trying to like go through my index of memories um because you know i don't remember like a lot of my childhood no um i mean that's true but uh, i guess like in one piece there's that like with also being um like asian you know there, for me there's not necessarily in total for me like sometimes there's still a little bit of that but it's like the um you know don't date till marriage like my parents are very like open but they also have these additional layers of like get get married like after you finish all of your schooling and like my parents wanted me to be a doctor and I was like that, that just good. might not be my yeah, that just might not be my path of like waiting all this time especially like you know if conditions are right and everything like if, you know if the time is right and ready but I think on like that's so hard I would I feel like this is something I wanted to like chew on but I think for me like the intersections is in a respect of that like I like as a woman of color especially like as like being a black woman being only seen as a sexual object at times that um like with that layer of like oh like the promiscuity but it like going hand in hand with like no more depth to the person that um, sure having like these kinds of relationships with people could be something that I like choose to do of my own regard, not because of like my ethnicity, not because of my sexuality, but because like those are the decisions I choose to make. Um, but that is not like always the decision I choose to make. Like, wanting to have a partner um and wanting to develop that relationship and for me have it be like meaningful and so the Asian because like my as a, like as an Asian person like my family is like pretty chill um as far as it uh it goes and so um like I do know like there's those in other areas like those are there are the stereotypes especially like for like some east and southeast Asian women of like the like the infantilism of it um but for me, I think that experience more so stems as like for um, my black culture of being of people seeing me as like just a sexual object or like that's all I'm capable of um, or that's all someone would want from me versus like something more sustained. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think we kind of have like opposite racial stereotypes applying to us and that's mixing with like our our being bi also um okay yeah um i also could keep going but we are actually reaching the end of like the time you and i had scheduled so um i would like to wrap up with um you know maybe like something else you mentioned in the book rain but like something or someone else who made you feel represented or or validated um so i'll give you i'll give you time to think but like i have the longest list i'll pick a few things um so you and i had talked a little bit earlier and i mentioned um you know on the show brooklyn 99 so stephanie beatrice plays rosa who is um who had like famously had a, um, a coming out episode, two episodes, I guess. Uh, but so like Stephanie Beatrice is one of the people who like the way she talks about bisexuality, like makes me so happy to be bi. And the fact that like she had a lot of input on that character's story arc and like the coming out episode, especially like it made that episode feel so real to me. And I told you like that this, almost every detail of that episode was like exactly the the like experiences that I have had um and I just like watch that episode every once in a while and I'll read like every interview <laughs> that Stephanie Beatrice does because it's just like it it reminds me that this is a great community and they're like great people like representing us you know if that's if that's really a thing um and I'll say like um, I went to uh, a camp for like um, 
queer and trans women um, a little while back and like so many people I met there are bi and it was just like it was really fun to be around people who were queer but like not going to invalidate who I am um, and and I still keep in touch with those friends um, I tend to like a lot of my friends are bi and I think that's you know, partly because of like what I'm studying but also um, I want to be around people who like who understand my experience and I'm not going to have to explain these things all the time. So shout out to my friends too. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, like having that community and like, I just like knowing you're in community, but like having them be very close um, to you. And so I would say like very similar, to like, yeah, like once I, once I got to college, <laughs> you know, you know, the whole college thing, uh, I've found lots of people like very easily, um, like with shared similar interests and everything. And then we all found out that like we're LGBT and we're like, hey! <laughs> like not even that being like the, the driving factor of like how we became friends, but just that like that experience and like coming out, we're like, oh, so you're okay. Um, it's been really nice. And like, having them be my closest friends and like when I think about it I like watching cartoons a lot um so one <laughs> that like sticks out to me is um Adventure Time Marceline um Princess Bubblegum just like I don't know and I love seeing um especially since I was like a little bit older not necessarily like as a kid um but a little bit older when like seeing um like LGBT representation um in media and to see it just like in areas that are kind of more portrayed towards like a younger demographic and so normalizing that seeing it and it's not like this whole big thing in a sense of like the defining point is that they are um like lgbtq identifying characters but that there's this aspect of their character and so much more like princess right. bubblegum is like a mad scientist <laughs> And like, that's really cool. And she does all these things. And Marceline is like our alt rock queen. Um, and so our vampire queen. And so seeing just like the multifacetedness of characters, especially in like kid shows or shows for like, again, like that younger demographic is just like what gives me hope and what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, again, like, you know, young adult novels. And I think like some animated shows are doing a really good job of representation. Um, I I haven't watched a lot of the Owl House, but I know it's like very meaningful for quite a few people because the main character is a, a bi Latina teenager, and like we don't get a lot of a lot of that kind of representation. So um, you know, and if anybody else wants to check out that show, I I think it might be something you enjoy. Been out of it. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts, Maya? No, thanks for bringing um, this topic today. I've had it's been a good start to my morning. Very passionate, fun, and like lighthearted in a sense. Kind of, kind of start. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for being so open with me and the Aya community. I I really enjoyed this this conversation. Um, and uh, definitely a huge thank you to the KBVR team for doing the editing and all of the production work. Once, once we stop recording, we just send it to them and they do everything for us. So we're very grateful for that. And to the rest of the Hattie Redmond Women and Gender Center for always supporting us. And we will be back next week with another episode. See you all.